Uh, we now move on and I invite uh, Priyanka. Uh, Priyanka is a coach and she's from Pune and uh, she's going to introduce Isabel. Uh, Priyanka, I would uh, request you to be very quick in the introduction, in your self-introduction, if anything. Priyanka, over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, it's been an honor to be uh, sharing the stage with all of you. And uh, one thing that I would like to mention about myself is that I'm absolutely in love with uh, transactional analysis. And that's how I am the only certified uh, TA practitioner in Pune, India. And uh, this makes me feel uh, proud. And at that moment, I'm equally humbled. So today, let me take this beautiful opportunity to introduce a lady who is inspiring me and people a lot like me uh, to their core. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Isabel Dittmar. She is an international HR practitioner, um, practitioner of emotional intelligence and HR leader. So she is also a certified business coach. And prior to that, she was a strategy consultant with the Boston Consulting Group. You can only imagine that what kind of rich and varied experience she might be bringing upon. She is also one of the brightest student of uh, Dr. Daniel Goldman, Dr. Rick Hansen, and Dr. Kristen Neff, to name a few. Uh, she is fond of emotional intelligence and she's based in Switzerland and a German national. There are a lot more about her, which I might not be able to do justice. So I would like to invite her and uh, talk about herself. So Isabel, over to you. Thank you so much, Priyanka. I'm totally humbled. <laughs> wow, what a presentation. Dear international HR community, a very warm welcome to all of you from Switzerland. And I know that especially in HR, and we've heard a lot about this today already, there is havoc running at the moment. So let's explore some ways how to build up your resilience and agility, both for yourself and for your organizations for these challenging times. We're in an incredibly VUCA situation right now. And uh, anything seems to be possible. This is your pilot speaking. My name is Adrian Oberhensley. I'm working from home today. <laughs> And just of a sudden, with this crisis, there is so much possible that before, nobody would ever have thought feasible. Just imagine this home office on a large scale. Before, nobody thought it was possible. And now, as we all know, bringing about change, both on a personal level and in an organization, we need either a very huge incentive, a lot of repetition, or, pain. With pain, unfortunately, being the most effective one. Which on the positive side means we are currently, if we want it or not, in a situation that can help us achieve change on a large scale. The only problem is, when we're in an emergency situation, our rational thinking brain, our prefrontal cortex, here in blue on the chart, it's hijacked by our brain's alarm system, the amygdala in green here, which puts us in flight, fight, or freeze mode and impairs our rational thinking and decision making. So what can we do? Obviously, as this is my presentation title, we can train our emotional intelligence to help us support ourselves and our organizations in these special times. And I will provide you with four practices that will help train all these four domains of emotional intelligence that you see here with a focus on resilience and an agile mindset. Let's begin by growing our own self-awareness with a way to get out of this emotional hijack um, that I just described. And you can imagine your brain like the snow globe here. When you're under stress, it's like the snow globe has been shaken and you cannot see clearly anymore. 
And the easiest is then to just wait a couple of seconds, like with a snow globe. And the best thing there is to just take a couple of deep breaths. And I invite you to do so right now. Please take a deep breath in through your nose or if you can't, through your mouth. And in your own rhythm, take another couple of deep breathings. And if you closed your eyes, I invite you to open them again. Who of you feels a little bit calmer and more present? I see a couple of knots here. And uh, I guess all of you now see the Swiss mountain inside the snow globe. Now that the snow has settled, you know, our mind has settled a little bit. And so you see just a couple of deep breaths can calm our nervous system. And we regain our self-control and agility and see more clearly with it. And this is a little practice that you can use all day with your team or also alone. And the best is to do it as often as possible. And for instance, what do we do very often at the moment? That's washing our hands. So we can always do it when we wash our hands. Or when we receive a message before answering ideally, then we don't shoot out anything that we do not want to. Or at the beginning of Zoom meetings like this here, or meetings, which by the way, companies like SAP or Google do because participants pre are more present, more focused, and the meetings get much more effective. And the more the merrier, neuroscience shows that our attention is a skill that can be trained with mindfulness. It's like a muscle that grows with practice. Now the second step on our way to more strength and resilience once we see a little bit more clearly is the second domain of emotional intelligence and the self-management. For many of us, it's like a tsunami flooding over us at the moment. And we think it's much too much responsibility. We just can't take on it. And one micro practice I find most useful to build resilience is the radical acceptance of what is and that just one person cannot do all. We can only do so much. And it goes that breathing in, you say, I do my best. And breathing out, I let go of the rest. And I invite you to do just this right now. To think about something that stresses you out, that's just too much. And breathing in, say to yourself, I do my best. And breathing out, I let go of the rest. And if you want, you can repeat it. Say to yourself inwardly, breathing in, I do my best. And breathing out, I let go of the rest. How did this make you feel? Repeat this as often as possible. Always when you're stressed out, overburdened or something throughout the day, even in the middle of conversations or meeting, and this will help you to release some stress. Now, once we've regained our balance, what is often getting in our way is our negativity bias. Due to evolution to help us survive in the wilderness, our brains are like Teflon for the positive and Velcro for the negative. With the problem that constantly dwelling on the negative, like the negative effects of Corona weakens us and it hinders us to recognize and use our resources to go for the positive and for a change. One tool that is very effective to turn this balance towards the positives is to train our mindset with a gratitude journal. So I invite you in the seven consecutive next days, every evening for at least three minutes, write about three things that went well today. And 
additionally what your part in it was that it came to take place because there's always something that you did that something positive happened for instance i received an encouraging message from a friend yeah hey this is a really good friend i was always there for her things like that and you will be surprised how this practice will shift your perspective towards a more healthy positive mindset give you strength agility and the acumen to tackle a positive change. Now, last but not least, as human beings, we're herd animals. So the tool that most helps us gain strength and be resilient is a true connection with other people by growing our empathy and our compassion. And the best practice here is for true connection is to either inwardly wish something positive and kind for someone. For instance, may you be happy. Or if you want to go one step further and go into compassion, then to actually offer to do something positive and do something good for somebody. And the cool thing is when we do this regularly, this increases both the well-being and resilience, not only for the other person, whom we're doing good something or wishing something for, but also for ourselves. So summarizing, now is the perfect time for change, as tough as it is. So tackle it, help yourself first so that you can help others, give you and the other nervous systems time to adjust, to get out of this amygdala hijack, to think clearly. And we've seen two pra a practice here, be kind to yourself to be able to help. Do the acceptance practice. Create a positive mindset, outbalance negativity bias to see a way forward. For instance, with a gratitude journal and connect with empathy and compassion by wishing others well and by spreading kindness. Thank you very much. So glad to hear you, Isabel, and especially the fact that in this shortest moment of time, how you have elaborated and specifically shared the doable techniques. So while you were uh, sharing these information with us, I was just uh, thinking and resonating with you that how do you think these techniques can be useful in organizations? And uh, during the special time of COVID, how do you think the leadership style has changed? Yeah. Okay, for the first one, thank you, Priyanka. Very important questions. It's, um, we can change our organ on an organizational level by training our populations, ideally starting with the leaders in emotional intelligence. And one, one, thing, one simple thing is start with all meetings uh, with a minute to arrive. How I explained, using my something like this, or just doing it. People will appreciate it and really be present there. And most importantly, be a role model yourself by providing vision, understanding, compassion, clarity, and autonomy, what I call VUCA leadership. And this brings me now to your second question. During this time of COVID, how had leadership style has, uh, style has changed? Many leaders, fortunately, have shown much more understanding and their human side. Mm -hmm. And this brought them closer to their staff. Indeed. And in addition, many employees received more trust and autonomy, not only due to the home office situation. So these are things that going forward, continue, continue show understanding and compassion and provide clear vision and clarity to give guidance in a human way to your staff. Thank you. I would just admit the fact that I am swept away from my feet. I mean, such a great and crisp session. I must acknowledge and appreciate for you being here with all of us. And ladies and gentlemen who are listening to us, watching us, please do share your gratitude and your writing, your gratitude journal, as Isabel has rightly mentioned. So I'm so glad that I had this opportunity to host you guys. Over to Mehul. And thank you, Isabel, once again. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, thank you, Isabel, and thank you, uh, Priyanka.